Mikael Bridges just dropped a career-high 45 points in Brooklyn's win over Miami the other night. Bridges was, of course, sent to the Nets as part of the deal that sent Kevin Durant to Phoenix. And while it's pretty much always a good idea to pull the trigger on a trade for KD if you have the opportunity to do so, there's a chance that the Suns ended up sending a future star to Brooklyn in the process. Mikhail is in a very interesting spot as a player because he's already incredibly impactful when it comes to affecting winning. He helped Phoenix make it to the 2021 Finals less than two years ago. He's also been in Defensive Player of the Year conversations in the past due to the fact that he's one of the very best perimeter defenders in the entire league, and he's flashed a ton of upside as a scorer to go along with all of the other complementary skills that he has. Now, with both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving out of the picture for Brooklyn, the Nets are looking for somebody to step up and be the guy for this team. And in this video, I want to take a look at why it might just be Mikhail Bridges who can step into that role. Some people are going to get a little bit hung up on Mikhail's age because for how often he's referred to as a young player, he is 26 years old, and a lot of people tend to think that you've hit your ceiling by the time you're 26. I personally disagree with that sentiment. I think that you need to show a multi-year sample size of stagnation to start to draw any sort of conclusion that a player has plateaued, and that's not the case for Bridges. One of the reasons he's not putting up a ton of big numbers is simply due to the fact that his role doesn't call for it. He's been in a primarily off-ball role, operating as a connecting piece, knocking down spot-up shots, attacking closeouts, and just being a reliable defender. Despite the fact that he's been in a primarily off-ball role, he's still continued to get better every single year of his career. Normally, when a player sees an increased role, they can kind of struggle to live up to the higher usage, but that hasn't been the case for Bridges at all. As his usage has scaled up, so is his scoring, and even though his efficiency has fluctuated a little bit as his role has changed over time, he still remains an above average scorer in terms of his true shooting percentage for his career so far. So the fact that he has the highest usage rate of his career and he's still remaining above average in efficiency is really promising for his long-term success as a scorer. Pretty much all of his numbers have increased as his role has increased. One of the biggest developments of his game has been the emergence of his mid-range shooting talent. Being a primarily spot-up shooter and closeout attacker, we weren't really always able to see a ton of his mid-range talent when he was in Phoenix, but there were still flashes here and there that could show you that there was a lot to be gotten from that area of his game. He's actually a very talented mid-range shooter and shot creator, and now that he's in Brooklyn, we're starting to see it more and more. You can actually see that during his rookie season, he was taking less than 15% of his shots from mid-range, and most of his shots were coming either from three or at the rim, but as time has gone on, he slowly increased that mid-range frequency to the point where now, he's taking 45% of his shots from the mid-range and leaning on that area of his scoring a lot more heavily. There's a physical component of Mikhail Bridges that allows him to be such an effective mid-range shooter, and ironically, it's very similar to what makes Kevin Durant such an amazing mid-range shooter. The height that KD possesses certainly plays a role in the fact that he's able to get off shots in that in-between area over bigger defenders, but I'd argue that his wingspan plays just as big of a role when it comes to his ability to knock down shots. Kevin Durant has a massive 7'5 wingspan, giving him a plus 7 wingspan relative to his 6'10 height. Mikhail Bridges also possesses a plus 7 wingspan relative to his height, holding a 7'1 wingspan to go with his 6'6 frame. This allows for the obvious, you can get a shot off over bigger defenders even if you don't have a height advantage because you can just use those ridiculously long arms to get the shot off over top of them. Another big thing that's been playing a role in his increase in mid-range reliability is how he's starting to navigate screens when he's operating as a ball handler. He's reliably able to use his teammates' screens to maneuver his defenders into them, allowing him to take the ball into space and get easy pull-ups, particularly against drop coverage when defenses aren't really playing to the level of screen and they're sagging off more into the paint. His self-creation as a whole has come really far over the years. If you look at his touches per game during his first four seasons and the percentage of his made field goals that were assisted, he's hovered around 83% of his shots being assisted and his touches hovered around 35 and 40 per game. 
This season, his touches per game have jumped to over 50, and his percentage of made field goals that were assisted has dropped down to nearly 65%, a decrease of almost 20 percentage points. This means that more of his made field goals are unassisted and that he's creating them for himself instead of relying on passes for others to get open looks. Now, another thing that's interesting to note is that the Nets have been running Bridges at point guard a lot in the three games since trading for him. I personally don't expect him to become some elite playmaker, but there's still plenty of room for him to start working as a complementary playmaker and adding more of a passing aspect to his game. He's shown that he can leverage his rim pressure, which is super important, just being able to collapse defenses and draw opposing defenders onto him when he's driving so that he can kick it out to his teammates on the perimeter. But he's also able to operate within the flow of Jacques Vaughn's offense, which operates in a lot more premeditated sets and actions. So the fact that he's able to effectively make the right reads in these situations is super promising. One particular action that the Nets love is this double pin down. Simmons is going to initiate this pin down handoff for Bridges to come off of it. And Simmons is going to immediately screen for Cam Johnson after getting the ball to Bridges. Bridges is going to drive, pulling the defense with him, and he kicks it out to Johnson on the perimeter after all of the help defenses focus mostly on Simmons and Bridges. They also run this variation of the same action where Simmons sets the initial screen, and instead of screening for Johnson, Simmons is gonna roll to the basket, Bridges can find him in the empty paint for the easy finish. Pairing this on-ball playmaking ability with the more complimentary aspects of his game that we've seen where he's able to just make the extra pass whenever he needs to, he's able to make the simple read, the one that's there, the one that he knows is gonna lead to a high percentage look, putting those two things together is gonna make for a really, really good complimentary playmaking option. And I don't think he's gonna become some like six, seven, eight assists per game type of player, but it seems entirely reasonable to to me that he can end up getting to the point where he's getting, you know, five plus assists per game on average. And then of course you have the fact that he's still an all NBA defensive level player on top of the budding offense that we've seen from him. This guy really is going to be the full package. And even if he doesn't end up becoming a 20 plus point per game scorer, even though I think he's fully capable of reaching that point, he can still absolutely be a third option on a championship level team because we've pretty much seen that he can be a third option on a championship level team. It's going to be very interesting to see how Brooklyn fleshes out this roster around him. And yeah, you know, they got rid of Kevin Durant, who is one of the best players we've ever seen in the history of basketball. And they got Mikhail Bridges in return, which doesn't really seem like an even trade, but they got a ton of picks along with it. I mean, they really have plenty to work with as well as Cam Johnson, who is a fantastic player in his own right. I've got full confidence that they're going to be able to make the most out of what Mikhail Bridges has to offer and whatever upside he has as an offensive player that's yet to be extracted. I think it's entirely fair to expect that they're going to be able to extract as much as humanly possible from him because he's clearly not done growing as a player yet, despite the fact that he is 26. He's going to have all the opportunity in the world to develop throughout the rest of the season. And it's not going to surprise me one bit if you take into account the fact that he is a developing mid-range scorer, he's flashed some really promising playmaking skills, he's still an elite perimeter defender, one of the very best in the entire NBA. It seems entirely reasonable that this guy could be in all-star conversations over the next few years as he fully starts to develop and hit his prime as a player. So do you think that Mikhail Bridges is a future all-star? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more, one, you can subscribe to my channel. That helps me out a ton and helps me continue making content. Two, you can click the link in my description and check out my Patreon. I've got a ton of content over there. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.